All right, greetings. This video is an abbreviated version of a presentation that I gave at Medu Bookstore in Atlanta, Georgia on November 12, 2015, entitled Dendera Lights Redux, a discussion of the plausibility of electrical engineering in ancient Egypt. This video is being created to give a summary and overview of the points of the discussion. However, if anyone is interested in the detailed minutia of the scholarship and presentation and points made, it is recommended to read the paper and article available on africancreationenergy.blogspot.com. The purpose of this presentation is to show that the ancient Egyptian reliefs known as the Dendera lights fit in with the expected chronology of time it would take to develop electrical technology based on the point in time when it is said by scholars like George G.M. James and Theophilo Binga that the ancient Egyptians had a philosophy of the atom. Number two, the purpose of this presentation is to show that based on the translations of the text, the components depicted and described in the Medunator hieroglyphics associated with the Dendera lights correspond symbolically, metaphorically, and in meaning and function to the components needed to build a cathode ray tube electrical light source. Three, the purpose of this presentation is to present a historical argument for the plausibility of the Dendera lights as an ancient Egyptian electrical light source and to demonstrate in practical application that since the Dendera lights can be built using items and terms corresponding to the components described in the Medunetta hieroglyphics of the text, then the Dendera lights serve as a tool that can be operatively used to teach certain principles of electrical engineering in African-centered educational settings using African symbology. So for starters, we want to present a timeline of electrical engineering. The accepted timeline of electrical engineering begins in 450 BC with Democritus's philosophy of the atom. Then controversially, in 250 BC, there is the Baghdad battery. Some people believe that it was a ancient primitive battery developed and discovered in Mesopotamia, whereas other people believe that it was just a pot used for storing scrolls. However, popular science shows like Mythbusters have declared the Baghdad battery as plausible. Then in 1802, we have Humphrey Davies' electric light bulb. In 1869 AD, the Crookes cathode ray tube is invented. In 1897, J.J. Thompson uses the Crookes cathode ray tube technology to discover empirical evidence of the atom and the subatomic particle, the electron. So right now, we want to note that there was a 2,347 year gap between the philosophy of the atom in 450 BC with Democritus and an actual technology developed based on that philosophy which provided empirical evidence of the philosophy in 1897 AD. Since the cathode ray tube was the piece of technology based on the philosophy of the atom which led to the discovery of empirical evidence of the atom and the subatomic particle, the electron, we want to discuss the components and construction of this technology. The cathode ray tube basically consists of a glass container in which a vacuum is produced or that container is filled with inert gas. Next you will need a high voltage power source. You would also need two metal electrodes, one leading from the cathode end of the power supply into the glass container and the other electrode leading from the anode end either into the glass container or touching the outside exterior of the glass container. When a voltage is applied across the metal electrodes, a stream of electrons travels from the cathode electrode to the anode electrode creating a cathode ray and it can also be observed that the glass begins to light up and glow due to the electrons traveling inside the glass. But based on the works of scholars like Martin Bernal, Theophilo Benga, Sheikh Anthony Diop, and George G.M. James, we know that Democritus got his philosophy of the atom from the ancient Egyptian Netter Atum. We know that the earliest empirical evidence of Atum goes back to around 2400 BC in the pyramid text. And we also know that a component of Democritus's philosophy was derived from the Memphite theology of Ptah and the earliest empirical evidence that we have for the Memphite theology of Ptah dates back to around 700 BC on an artifact known as the Shabaka stone. When we do a comparative analysis of the ancient Egyptian atomic philosophy, which is presented in the Memphite theology of Ptah, as well as associated with the Netter or deity Atum, we see that the various points on the ancient Egyptian cosmology line up with our own modern Big Bang theory of cosmology. Important to note in our discussion is once energy is converted into subatomic particles like quarks and electrons, this corresponds to the point in the ancient Egyptian cosmology where you have either the primordial mound or the primordial lotus rising from the primordial abyss. And the point in the Big Bang Theory cosmology where atoms begin to form corresponds to the point in ancient Egyptian cosmology where the Netter Atum comes into existence. Then in ancient Egyptian cosmology, Atum becomes Atum Ray, symbolizing the sun, which corresponds to the point in the Big Bang Theory where suns and stars are formed. And so we see that the symbolism associated with the Netter Atum, you know, 
unifies observational astronomy and particle physics like a true scientific cosmology. So now we have a timeline of ancient Egyptian atomic philosophy with the year 2400 BC being the earliest empirical evidence of our tomb, the year 700 BC as the earliest empirical evidence of the Memphite theology. Now it's important to note that both of these are just philosophies. These are not technologies. These are not practical applications of the knowledge. And it is the technology, it is the practical application of that atomic philosophy which we are looking for. Now recall that it took 2,347 years between Democritus's atomist philosophy and the development of the cathode ray tube, the piece of technology based on the atomist philosophy, which led to discovery of empirical evidence of the atom and the subatomic particle, the electron. Therefore, we would expect a similar amount of time to have to transpire between the ancient Egyptians' atomist philosophy to an actual piece of technology developed based on that atomist philosophy. When we subtract 2,347 years from the year 2,400 BC, we come up with the year 53 BC. So we expect to see some form of technology similar to the cathode ray tube developed by the ancient Egyptians around the year 53 BC. So we want to develop some stipulations for what we're looking for when we're searching for plausible evidence of the ancient Egyptians' use of electrical engineering technology. So we would expect the ancient Egyptians to describe the technology and symbolism associated with their cosmology and philosophy related to Atum. We would expect evidence of the technology around the year 50 BC. We would also be looking for some form of technology similar to the cathode ray tube, and therefore the ancient Egyptians would also have to describe the source of power or spark for the technology, the metal electrode, the transparent container containing either a vacuum or filled with inert gas, the way the components would be assembled, and the light produced by the device. Now, it is my assertion that in the artifact known as the Dendera lights, all of these conditions are satisfied. So the Dendera lights refers to seven various images found in two buildings at the Dendera Temple Complex in ancient Egypt. In the Hathor Temple of Dendera, the images are in two rooms. There are two images on the south wall of the south South Crypt Chamber. There's one image on the north wall of the South Crypt Chamber. There's one image on the south wall of Chapel G. There are two images on the north wall of Chapel G. It's important to note that the images in Chapel G were in color, whereas the images in the South Crypt Chamber were not in color. Also in Chapel G, this room was used to celebrate cosmological festivals like the New Year and another festival called the Night of the Child in His Nest. And again, there's one image in the Temple of the Birth of Isis, Iseum building in the back of the Hathor Temple. This is the list of resources that were used for translations of the text. So on the South Crypt Chamber South Wall, this translation lets us know that the Dendera light images were relevant to two cosmological celebrations and festivals, one being the New Year celebration, the other being the festival called the Night of the Child and His Nest. Another important piece of information comes from the title line of the South Wall. There are two cartouches or two shinu with the name of Ptolemy the Twelfth, and since we know that Ptolemy the 12 reigned around the year 54 BC. This gives us a date for the point in time when these Dendera light images were carved. Next, this portion of the translation lets us know the name and identity of the first snake emerging from the lotus in the boat on the far right after the seated woman. We know that this snake is Har Simatawi, depicted as a snake. Directly behind that snake is a falcon, and this falcon is also Har Simatawi. Another important point is that the translation lets us know that not only were these pictures but these were also actual physical objects that were kept in this room and it lets us know the material that the objects were made out of as well as the size of the objects. This part of the translation gives us an idea of the components of the two Dendera light images on the far left. Starting with the rightmost image, it lets us know that the snake emerging from the lotus flower is Harsa Matawe. It lets us know that that snake emerging from the lotus flower is the Ba inside of the lotus flower. It also lets us know that that is a dead pillar that is holding up the bubble around the snake, and it also lets us know that the figure of the person on its knees is the ka. The translation also lets us know that this rightmost Dendera light image in which the jed is present is the day boat sailing across the primordial waters. It lets us know that the material that was used to create this was gold and all precious stones, and it also lets us know that the height of this object was about nine inches. The translation associated with the leftmost snake lets us know that the figure of the person on the pedestal is the to he, which represented infinity. The translation also lets us know that for the leftmost Dendera light image in which He is present, it's the night boat. It also lets us know 
that the material used for this object was gold and metal and the height was about 12 inches. On to the translation of the north wall of the south crypt chamber. Again, it lets us know that the snake emerging from the lotus flower is Har Matawi. It lets us know that the bubble or bulb or protective envelope that is around the snake is called a hen. It lets us know that this entire structure is the day boat or the day bark. And it lets us know that that is he at the front of the image holding up the hen or protective envelope. The translation also lets us know the material which was used to build the actual physical object was gold and the height of the entire object was about 82 inches tall. On to the translation of the north wall of Chapel G. The translation lets us know that the snake emerging from the lotus is Harsa Matawe. The translation lets us know that the bubble or protective envelope around Harsa Matawe is called a hen and the translation lets us know that the material used to create these physical objects was gold and all precious stones and the height was about two and a quarter inches. Lastly, the translation of the text on the south wall lets us know that the snake emerging from the lotus is Harsa Matawe. The translation also lets us know that Harsa Matawe represents the ba from the lotus flower. It lets us know that the figure of the person on its knees is the ka and the translation lets us know that the material used to create the physical object was gold and that the height of the object was 20 inches. So now we want to emphasize a few points which the translators of the text also emphasize. One quote comes from Zainab al Kordi where he says, it is certain in the text that the word hen refers to the protective envelope surrounding the snake coming out of the lotus. This is a new definition to be added to dictionaries that define this word hen as coffer or where manuscripts are kept or where helpful herbs are stored. And this is coming from a paper that was written in 1982, which means in 1982, translating the text associated with the Dendera lights, they found a new definition, a new way this word hen was used in which it was not used before. Then 20 years later in 2002, Wolfgang Weikis translates the word hen as a tank, vessel, container, receptacle, canister, or box. He also speculates in his paper that that container may have actually been a transparent container since the ancient Egyptians depicted it as transparent in all of their reliefs. The Egyptologists who translated the text also discussed the Neta Harsamatawe. The important point to make here is that Harsamatawe has two forms. One of his forms is that of the hawk, and in his hawk form, he represents the sun. Another one of his forms is the primordial serpent or the serpent emerging from the lotus. Harsamatawe as a serpent emerging from the lotus does not represent the sun. Harsamatawe as a serpent emerging from the lotus represents something primordial which existed before the sun. Another Egyptologist, Frankos Dumas, says the same thing. Harsa Matawe has two forms. Simatawe means a unification of two lands or the unification of two things. Harsa Matawe is a unifying principle, a unifying concept, a concept that unifies observational astronomy and particle physics. And the ancient Egyptians were intelligent enough to create two different symbols to distinguish the two. Harsamatawe depicted as a hawk represents the sun. Harsamatawe as a snake emerging from a lotus represents something primordial which existed before the sun. The word primordial means first and fundamental. So now you're, when you start talking about first and fundamental, you're talking about things atomic and subatomic. So if we go back to our ancient Egyptian atomic philosophy, we can replace the symbol of the Netai tomb with the symbolism associated with Harsamatawe. You see Harsamatawe as the primordial serpent emerging from the lotus flower, and this corresponds to the point where atoms and subatomic particles came into existence. Then, Harsamatawe as a falcon, which represented the sun, corresponds to the point where suns and stars come into existence in our modern Big Bang scientific cosmology. So let's recap what we learned from the text. The text lets us know that the Dendera lights actually refer to physical objects which either represented or actually did produce light. The objects were created around the date 54 BC, which is around the time when we expected some form of technology to have been developed based on the ancient Egyptians' atomic philosophy. The text also lets us know the identity of the physical components which went into the creation of these objects. It lets us know that there was a lotus flower, that the snake emerging from the lotus flower, flower was made out of gold. This snake was Harsa Matawe and that this snake was the Ba emerging from the lotus flower. They let us know that the figure on its knees was the Ka and depending on whether we were dealing with the day boat or the night boat sailing across the primordial waters, there was the presence of the Jed Pillar or the presence of the Netter He or both. And also it lets us know that there was a transparent container called a hen in which the gold Harsa Matawe serpent was inside of. 
So when we talk about the symbolic meaning of the various components described in the text, as we already have discussed, the lotus flower represented a primordial source of light. Parsimatawe was a primordial substance which existed before the sun. The Ba is often translated as soul, but also has associations to personality and characteristics. The Ka is often translated as spirit or double, but it also is associated with the divine animating spark. The Neter He represents infinity. Jed represents stability and and again, since He was in the night boat and Jed was in the day boat, then in this instance, He and Jed are essentially opposites, like He representing infinity and Jed as stability representing zero. And lastly, there was the Hen, or the plural Henu, the transparent container. Additionally, some auxiliary symbols that we want to discuss is the Sema symbol. The Sema in Har Sematawe means union, and the actual hieroglyphic was a symbol of lungs attached to a windpipe, which we will use as a metaphor for hydrodynamics, the movement and flow of air. Also, the text mentions Neheb Kao. Neheb Kao means the bringer together of the Ka and the Ba. Also, the text does not explicitly mention the Ak, but we know in ancient Egypt when the Ka and the Ba are present and united, they come together to create the Ak. And in E.A. Wallace Budge's Hieroglyphic Dictionary, the word Ak is translated as meaning light, radiance, brilliance, and shine. So now when we do a comparative analysis of the components of the Dendera there are light objects to the cathode ray tube technology. We find that the symbolic meaning of all the components described corresponds to a component of the cathode ray tube electrical light source. You have Harsimatawe, which was made out of gold, corresponding to the extension of the cathode metal electrode into the glass container. We have the glass container of the cathode ray tube corresponding to the hen transparent container in the Dendera light object. Then we have either the jet pillar or he, which were made out of gold, as the anode metal electrode. Next, you have the Ka on its knees, which the Ka, again, is the divine spark, and that Ka corresponds to the high voltage power supply, the source of the spark for the cathode ray tube. And lastly, you have the lotus flower connecting the Ka, or source of the spark, to Harsimatawe, the Ba, inside the transparent container, and also connecting the Ka to the anode electrode to complete the circuit. So in conclusion, the artifacts known as the Dendera lights should be considered in a historical context and in the context of present and future practical application. So for historical considerations, it is indeed probable, meaning most statistically likely, given the number of statues throughout, throughout the storied history of ancient Egypt, it is indeed probable that the physical objects described in the text of the Dendera lights were nothing more than just statues. However, if the objects were just statues, it is a fact that to the ancient Egyptians, the statues represented a primordial source of light different from the sun. Again, primordial means first and fundamental. So now you're talking about atomic and subatomic. So if Leonardo da Vinci's drawings of flying machines, which were merely representations of flight, but did not actually fly and were never built. And then when they were built, they weren't even able to fly. Since these things are noteworthy to be mentioned in the history of aeronautical engineering, then likewise, the Dendera lights, which represented primordial light or electrical light to the ancient Egyptians, should also be noteworthy to be mentioned in the history of electrical engineering because not only did the Dendera lights represent atomic light, but working replicas of the Dendera lights can actually be built describing the components used to build the technology with the terms from the metal netter. Second, it is plausible, meaning logically argued, that the objects were electrical lighting technology given the date of the objects 50 BC fits in with the timeline needed to develop such a technology based on the point in time when it is said that ancient Egyptians had a philosophy of the atom in 2400 BC. Second, the text associated with the Dendera lights mentions components which provided a spark, the Ka, which combined with other components, the Ba, to produce light, the Ah. And third, comparative analysis of the components described in the text of the Dendera lights matched to electrical engineering components needed to construct the cathode ray tube electrical lighting device. In present and future practical application, it is undeniable that a cathode ray tube electrical light source can be constructed describing the components needed to build a technology using the terms as described in the text accompanying the Dendera lights release. You have the light source or lotus, the glass container or hen, the source of the spark, the ka, the metal electrode, harsimatawe, the bot and the lotus, the pump to remove the air from the glass container, the semi symbol, a symbol to indicate a vacuum inside the container and the 
jet or a symbol used to indicate filling the container with inert gas. Heh. In this regard, the Dendera lights serve as a tool that can be operatively used in the present and on into the future to teach certain principles of electrical engineering in African-centered educational settings using African symbology.